I'm Justin Pritchard. This is the new Honda Pilot Trail Sport. You may not have seen inside of one of these before, so let's hop on board and see how much room you've got. Very easy entry, a little bit taller than a standard Pilot, more or less, though still just a slide over into your seat. Uh, no issue with headroom getting in through this door opening for someone of my size, being about five foot 10 uh, and 200 pounds. So let's take a look at the space here around me. Nothing cramped in terms of shoulder room, in terms of leg room, in terms of knee room. Nice wide opening here. Even with this fairly wide center console, we've got the wireless charging pad right here for our phone, some extra storage here, uh, USB charge ports there, and a 12 volt under that little flippy. This is how we control the transmission, park, reverse, neutral, drive, other controls here for drive mode, downhill assist, parking brake, and so on. Loads of headroom even above with that sunroof again at about five foot 10. I've got easily over the width of my hand uh, above me there in terms of headroom. Let's see how someone of my size now would fit directly in the second row seat behind myself. Very, very simple. Again, just kind of a lateral butt slide. As you saw there, uh, plenty of clearance overhead. Uh, for this guy's noggin. So with the second row seat all the way forward, knees are just to say touching the back of the first row seat. We can slide that back all the way here if we like. Probably recline it further, just like this if we want. Not quite as much knee and leg room as I was expecting, though still plenty, and definitely room uh, for four adults to sit back here, lounge, and hang out. Great outward sight lines, lots of tall glass, and again back here in terms of headroom, I've still got uh, five fingers worth of width above me, even with this sunroof here. Uh, let's go hop into the back and take a look at the cargo area. Power tailgate, of course. So in this configuration, we've got a uh, roomy enough four-seater for four adults and all of this cargo space uh, back here behind it. So if we need access uh, to the cargo in the back or that third seating row, just as easy as pressing this button right here and that seat's gonna automatically get out of my way. Now I can walk back there into the third row if I need to, or access the cargo this way if I like. Other thing we can do is actually flip these seat backs down and out of our way if we've got some longer or wider items to carry back here as well. This color is called Diffused Sky Blue, and the Pilot is all new for 2023 as it enters its fourth generation on sale with Canadian pricing from a little under 50000 for the Sport trim grade, about 55000 for the EXL, and from the low to mid-60s for the top-line Touring and Black Edition models. And about halfway through that lineup is this all-new Pilot version, the first Trail Sport. It's Honda's answer to the call of shoppers after something even more rugged and capable than a standard kit Pilot, and a competitive Competitor to machines like the Nissan Pathfinder Rock Creek, Jeep Grand Cherokee L, and new Kia Telluride X-Pro. As more and more shoppers want to get further and further away from their daily grinds with their SUVs, high-capability models like these are becoming all the rage and Honda's eager for a piece of the pie. If you're after a Honda Pilot that gives you much less to worry about while you're out and about bashing around in the bush, or checking out some new trails, then this is a pretty solid recipe. We will be stacking these competitors up side by side a little later in this video and comparing their fuel economy, size, storage, pricing, and performance. I've got a ton of math to share with you, but first, let's go under the hood. That is an all-new quad cam four-valve per cylinder 3.5 liter V6, good for 285 horsepower and 262 pounds of torque. It features a weight-saving new low-profile cylinder head design and cylinder deactivation. And in an interesting switch for Honda, this engine is no longer VTEC equipped, as the engineers pursued other means of meeting emissions and performance targets instead. Behind that, a new 10-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters and the push-button gear shift console. The transmission directs power to the new four-wheel drive system, complete with an award-winning torque vectoring version of the latest Honda iVTM4 all-wheel drive system. And in trail sport models like my tester, you get a new stronger rear axle that can handle 40% more torque and respond 30% faster, while sending up to 70% of the engine's power to the rear axle and up to 100% of that rear axle torque to a single rear wheel. Towing capacity is 5,000 pounds with four-wheel drive, and front drive units can tow 3,500 pounds. Interestingly, Honda recommends using premium fuel when towing anything more than 3,500 pounds. So how does the 2023 Honda Pilot Trail Sport stack up against its competition? 
Well, key competitors you're likely to be cross-shopping here include the Toyota Highlander, Kia Telluride, and Nissan Pathfinder. The Highlander has the smallest interior dimensions of that group, with all measurements being smaller than the Pilot. The Telluride has similar rear headroom and larger front headroom compared to the Pilot, making it a better choice for taller passengers. The Pathfinder offers the most front legroom, which is 8% more than the Honda Pilot. And the Pilot is the longest machine in this group, followed by the Pathfinder, Telluride, and Highlander, with just 2.5% separate this group on overall length, with width its pilot in the lead, followed by Telluride, Pathfinder, and Highlander, with just 3.3% separating the group. The Pathfinder and Telluride have the longest wheelbases, followed by the Pilot and Highlander with less than 2% separating the group in this measurement. So the point is, these are all about the same size, but technically, the Pilot is the biggest and the Highlander is the smallest. The Telluride has the largest minimum cargo capacity at 21 cubic feet, or 595 liters, followed by the Honda Pilot at 18 cubic feet, or 510 liters, and both the Toyota Highlander and Nissan Pathfinder have the smallest minimum cargo capacity at 16 cubic feet, or 453 liters if you like. So the difference in minimum cargo capacity between the largest and smallest models here is about 31% making this dimension one of the more important ones for shoppers to consider. On maximum cargo capacity with the seats folded, both the Pilot and Telluride have the largest maximum figure at 87 cubic feet or 2,463 liters, followed by the Highlander at 84 cubic feet or 2,379 liters, and finally the Pathfinder has the smallest maximum cargo capacity at 80 cubic feet or 2,265 liters if you like. The difference in maximum cargo capacity between the largest and smallest models here is a little under 9%. The Toyota Highlander makes the best use of your fuel dollars with the only turbo four-cylinder engine in the group. It's not only the most fuel efficient here, but also makes the most torque. By the numbers, it's up to 18% more torque from the Highlander and up to 16% less fuel used to do it compared to the competition. But the Highlander is the smallest machine here and has the least horsepower with 265, then it's 284 for the Pathfinder, 285 for the Pilot, and 291 for the Telluride. The thirstiest vehicle on the list, that's the Honda Pilot. So when it comes to fuel costs, you can pretty much divide this group into two categories. The Honda Pilot and Kia Telluride get the same fuel economy ratings at 11.2 liters per 100 kilometers combined, that's 21 miles per gallon, and the Toyota Highlander is the most fuel efficient at 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers or just about 23 miles per gallon. That is a virtual tie with the Pathfinder at 10.5 liters per 100 clicks or about 22 miles per gallon. These figures are close, Canadians paying $1.50 for a liter of gas and driving 25,000 kilometers per year can expect to feed the thriftiest model here, the Highlander, $3,860 worth of fuel annually, and about $120 more than that annually for the slightly thirstier Pathfinder. At about $4,200 annually to feed the thirstier Pilot or Telluride, that's another further step of about $263 per year. So to summarize, based on my math here, the lowest monthly fuel cost is for the Toyota Highlander at $322, and the maximum monthly fuel cost is for the Kia Telluride or Honda Pilot at $350. If you're splitting hairs on fuel economy trying to decide which model is right for you, then remember that the maximum monthly fuel cost difference between these machines is about $28, bucks, a total difference of less than 9% of your fuel budget. Note that these fuel economy figures are for standard versions of these SUVs, and if you're going for a more off-road oriented model, like the Trail Sport or Pathfinder Rock Creek, allow a few extra bucks a month for the reduction in fuel economy brought on by the off-road modifications.